是。There we go. Right. Good evening, Daniela. How are you? Good evening. I'm fine. So nice to see you. Thank you for coming and thank you for being punctual. You're the first one thank to come you. to the class. Yeah, sure. I'm playing with my two cell phones. I have Excel before this class. Oh. So <laughs> I see. I'm logging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quickly. Very good. Yeah. So you are teacher. teacher I need. I need to ask you some help. I know yeah. that. I think I are not any. Oh well. Somebody else is here, but the thing is, I know my grammar is not the best, and mm. I'm for conf. Oh, what's what's the word? Confidence. Yeah, confident. Yes, confident. Mm -hmm. Okay, I feel confidence when I when I'm speaking English because I try to make it I don't know like fluent or something, but I have problems when I'm trying to make sentences, mm -hmm. and yeah. I don't have the basis. So what I have to do, I need to improve this. I need to yes improve this. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Yes, and uh, well. This is what I did when I started, like many years ago. Uh, I think it was like around probably uh, eight years ago. I don't, I don't know, something like that. So uh, I don't know if it's going to work the same for you because I mean we are all different. We all have different ways of learning. So when I started, I wanted to know like all the different like tenses. So I learned like present perfect the simple present, simple past, all of that. And I try to like, let's say, like think about it just like in Spanish because they are very okay. similar. You think about it, they are very similar. And then, uh, I mean, then you only need to add like some additional words sometimes. And then in English, okay. uh, there are just a few different expressions, but uh, I think that that's something that can help you. And then, like I mentioned before, uh, if you have the opportunity to, to practice like, to somebody that knows um, more, or you can talk to somebody that is actually a native speaker, that's even better because you can have the opportunity to uh, hear all those expressions that they use because they have uh, their own expressions. Uh, so that's something that can help. And the other okay. thing, uh, you know, like what they say that you can, for example, uh, watch movies or, but really good movies, right? I mean, not like, uh, you know, that kind of movies that they don't have like too much vocabulary, but you need to yes. uh, watch movies or TV shows that have really okay. good vocabulary and okay. you can turn the subtitles on so you can see exactly what they are saying. Yes. I think that that's one of the ways to do it. Uh, I mean, al menos eso, creo que me practice bastante. and practice and practice all the time, right? Practicar bastante, sí, creo que practicar es bastante clave. Y yeah. eso, Teacher, I I want to share with you something. In my last work, it was um, a work, um, I don't know what's the word in English, but it's like containers and some stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So three Chinese people came to El Salvador and they only speak in English, just this. So uh, at work, Daniela, she can speak English, and for me, it was, mm. oh my goodness, Chinese people, <laughs> what am I going to do with them? But when I went to the um, to the meeting, it was amazing. I understand English like Spanish, but I know my English is not the best. I never went to a, an, an English school, never. Just only at the school and then TV series, music and mm. tutorials and different videos. So... I know my English is not the best. In Spanish, I speak a lot. In English, I can't. So I need to, I, I know I need to learn more vocabulary. And now I'm learning phrasal verbs, trying to memorize phrasal verbs. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And that's all. That's it. Mm-hmm. I'm doing, and I'm here because I need to improve my English. I want to be a bilingual. So Very good. No, you're doing good. You're doing good. I think that you have a really good level, and I mean, I think that we are always learning something new because uh, when it comes to languages, they have so many different words, so many different things that you can learn. Like for example, if you think about it, uh, there are. Uh, there is like more specialized English when it comes to things like, uh, let's say, uh, mechanics, uh, economics, uh, yes. marketing, all that kind of things. Yes. They have their own vocabulary. So yes. uh, we are always learning something new. So I, I think that you need to keep up doing the, the good job that you're doing. Because you're doing a good job. And we are going to, hopefully we can learn more things here during this class. That's like, the most important thing for me, like I told you before, guys, I, I want you to learn something new. So I, I will do the best that I can. So I can uh, uh, share as much as I can with you. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. You're, You're welcome, Daniela. Okay, well, uh, thank you so much, Daniela. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome, Jacqueline. Happy to see you again. Arlene, Rodrigo, Luis. Very good. Thank you, guys, for coming. I think that probably the rest are still on vacation. <laughs> probably. <laughs> you guys are here, so that's amazing. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys taking the time to be here for the class. I know that uh, probably you guys may be tired sometimes. You guys may be, uh, you guys may have other things to do, but you guys always are uh, very responsible. You always come to the class. So that's amazing. I appreciate that. And I think that that is something good at the end because uh, you guys have to complete a number of classes. Uh, I think that you need to attend for uh, to at least 80% of the classes, right? So uh, if you guys come uh, to the class as much as you can, then at the end, if something happens, if something comes up, then you have the ability uh, like to miss one class, for example, and, and then it wouldn't be like too much problem, right? So, well, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the holiday. Hopefully you could uh, you were able to spend some time with your family and friends or whatever that you guys do on uh, the day of the dead. And I'm happy to see you again. Uh, we're going to have this class. It's going to be like the only Friday that we are going to have classes on. And then, like I mentioned the last time, we only have classes from Monday through Thursday, right? That's it. Okay, so let's see. Vamos a continuar, guys, con nuestra eh, temática de siempre. Recordemos que prácticamente para ahora lo ideal sería que ya tengamos completada la sección 2. Creo que hay varios que ya lo hicieron, quizás. Vamos a ver por acá. Lo bueno de esto es que ustedes lo pueden hacer a su propio ritmo, ¿ok? Lo pueden hacer en cualquier momento. Si quieren avanzar, está bien. Nadie les va a decir nada. No hay ningún problema. Les pueden venir acá en cualquier momento del día y hacerlo. Yo, por lo general... Eh, en la clase les muestro todo esto, vemos los videos y todo. Por si ustedes, pues, digamos, eh, quieren aprovecharlo durante la clase, ya no tienen que ver el video después, ¿verdad? Es como que ya avanzan un poco. Porque eso es lo que me pasaba, por ejemplo, a mí. Yo, yo también he llevado clases así en línea, porque siempre me gusta estar aprendiendo algo nuevo. Eh, y durante la clase, si uno puede ver, digamos, en este caso los videos, ya no es como un material extra que hay que ir a ver después. Entonces ya cubrimos ese tiempo, ¿verdad? Y tenemos tiempo para hacer otras cosas. Así que esa es una de las razones por las cuales me gusta ver todo este material con ustedes en la clase, para tal vez de alguna forma ayudar a que no tengan que verlo después o algo por el estilo. ¿Okay? Aunque sí es bueno de que ustedes eh, siempre vayan, busquen más información, por ejemplo, si tienen una pregunta o alguna duda con alguna palabra o algo, como por ejemplo la vez pasada que les pregunté acerca de commuting, uh, what does commuting mean? Then you guys were like, I don't know, and for example, and you can go online and then uh, look it up. And that is going to help you so you can uh, learn uh, more things, right? Which at the end is what we want. We want to learn as much as we can, okay? So it says here, uh, we're going to start with section number two. It says, we have the lesson objective. They uh, see, uh, and sorry, it says, by the end of this class, you will learn about the best jobs based on personality types. Uh, vamos a ver, perdón, guys, me, queda, me acabo de equivocar, le di clic a la parte equivocada. Vamos a ver. 
Por acá está, miren, el progreso de ustedes. Creo que eso les quería mostrar. Vamos a ver acá. Por aquí. Vamos a ver. Dice 23, creo que estaban inscritos. Y a la clase venimos como 13, nada más. A ver qué pasó con los demás. Vamos a ver acá. <ríe> Bien, aquí está. Estudiantes inscritos. Si se fijan, por acá están las notas. ¿eh? 100. Blanca. Evelyn. Jacqueline. 100 también. Perfecto. Aquí está la tarea 1 y tarea 2. 90, 100. Algunos ya van empezando por ahí. 25. Ya, ya lo llevan a la... Ya van avanzando. Dice acá Karen Lisset. Fernando Aldana. 100, 100. Ya, hizo, ya hizo prácticamente todo. Luis Fernando. Luego Melissa. Por acá. Aquí la tenemos. También va avanzando. Y Rodrigo. I have a question regarding the. Uh, I don't know. I start doing today because I did. I forgot during the week because I had a lot of, of work. But it it um. I don't know what was. The homework that it doesn't allow me to complete. So is it like grayed out or what happens? I mean, uh, when you click on it, uh, it doesn't let you do it or what, what exactly is it that is going on? It won't, it won't let it you was, I think the first part to show up in the first part or, or the second part in when I have to choose that or mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. to, to create the example and I have to write the complete um the complete sentences but all the all the option it was it was wrong I don't know if but I, I didn't find it or probably same save the record and I have a wrong response, but I don't find ah yeah I find it. You found it? Uh, okay. Can I share my screen just for a moment? Or no, okay. right? Sure, I mean no, I think that you can send a screenshot to the group. I think that, that would be easier. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead. Chat yeah, that... and Okay. That would be easy because I, I have to record the screen and I, and I don't know if I if you share your screen, I think that probably is going to stop the recording. Ah, uh, no. yes, I have permission <laughs> to share my screen. Ah, ya está. Vamos a ver. Dice, problemas relativos. Ah, thank you so much. Vamos a ver. Write the following statements using who that to make one sentence. I'd like to meet people who... Mm -hmm. I'd like to meet people. No sé si, eh, si yo tenía solamente que agregar el that o who uh -huh. entre people in this o, o era. Me just a second. No Vamos a ver, estamos viendo. Gracias. Uh, sí, básicamente solamente tendría que ser como. Eh, combinar las dos como habíamos como habíamos eh, aprendido en la clase ¿verdad? como aquí está el ejemplo de hecho dice I don't want to have a partner and then we have I have nothing in common with this person so then we can just rewrite the sentence and say something like I don't want to have a partner who I have nothing in common with so in this case like I don't uh, sorry uh, I'd like to meet people uh, who have a good sense of humor tendría que ser algo así ¿Así fue como lo que redactó usted? I like to meet people. Uh, -huh. Who have a good sense of humor. Who have, ah, ok. Uh -huh. Ah, ok. Pruebe así y me dice a ver qué, le ta qué tal. Y siempre hay que ponerle el punto al final, guys. Porque a veces... 
por un puntito ya dice que no está bueno, así que también eso tenganlo en mente. Yes, it was. It's correct. Mm -hmm. Very okay. good. Now, no me to to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Muy bien, Arlene. Entonces, básicamente ahí, yo guaca. Básicamente ahí lo que teníamos que hacer era eso. Solamente como permítanme por acá. Solamente teníamos que reescribir la oración y utilizando lo que habíamos aprendido, ¿verdad? Que es lo de los pronombres relativos. Entonces ahí las uníamos utilizando who or that. Básicamente. Solo... Vamos a ver. Sí, go ahead, Jacqueline. Hi, good evening. Uh, I have doubts with the second part of the relative pronouns about, uh, test or examples. I don't know. Because it says uh, instructions rewrite rewrite the following statement using who that to make um ah that was mistake <laughs> uh, I think it was my my mistake I thought okay. it was the what I what I believe but that's the part that I have uh, uh, okay. there is a Did wrong part is, is this the part that you are talking about. Yeah. Check. Mm, no. No. Oh yeah, just just that. Okay. But I, I, it's it's grown because both were, las dos se me salieron equivocadas pues. Entonces, <laughs> <laughs> eh, pero no sé en qué momento yo leí que era como a mi criterio. Entonces por eso. Oh, I see. Y al final yeah. la así, por eso era, era mi duda. You said like, you know what? Never mind. I don't, I'm not dealing with this. Just, <laughs> just gonna leave it alone and forget it. <laughs> That's okay. Just that. okay. It's okay. Thank, Thank you, Jacqueline. I appreciate that. Yeah. So in this case, it's the same thing. I think that it's the same example that Arlene was asking for. So you only need to. This is very important. I think that probably sometimes because we are. Uh, maybe tired or we may be sleepy or I don't I don't know. Uh, we don't read the instructions, but that's really important, guys. When I was in college, I remember that that was like the most important thing to read the instructions. One, uh, I remember that once I had this uh, uh, like this evaluation, this test, I guess I don't know. And and basically, uh, if you didn't follow the instructions during that test. Uh, you didn't get uh, like like a good grade because of that because uh, one of the points of evaluation was like to put in your name, uh, the date, uh, the uh, the teacher and all of that and I forgot to do it so I got a bad grade because of that. <laughs> Entonces bueno es bien importante seguir las indicaciones. Les estaba contando como mi pequeña historia eh, cuando estaba en la universidad. Me acuerdo que me quedó esa anécdota ahí. ¿eh? que tenía una, una evaluación, parte de la evaluación era que tenía que escribir, seguir las instrucciones, eso era bien importante. Leer desde el encabezado, de poner el nombre, poner la fecha, poner qué grupo, porque siempre son los grupos, pero es como que grupo 01 o C01, no, no sé, algo así. Entonces yo esa vez no seguí las instrucciones y solamente por eso perdí como tres puntos o algo así. Ya me saqué creo que un 7 o 6 y yo estaba... Pues bien enojado porque yo me quería sacar un 9 o un 10, no sé, algo así. Pero solo por no seguir las indicaciones. Así que es importante siempre leer, ¿verdad? Yo solamente se lo digo como para que siempre lo tengan en mente. No, no por esta, este caso, sé que a veces uno está un poco distraído o cosas por el estilo y está bien. Pero en otros momentos sí es importante leer las instrucciones. Acá dice, read, write the following statements. And then we have the example, right? It says, uh, we have two sentences. Like, I don't want to have a partner. And then we have sentence number two. I have nothing in common with this person. So then we just want to join uh, the two sentences using the relative pronouns. Like, I don't want to have a partner who I have nothing in common with. And in this case, I like to meet people who have a good sense of humor or that have a good sense of humor. Just like that. Okay. Estamos ahí, ¿verdad? Bueno, muchas gracias, guys. Eh, vamos a continuar. No sé si tienen alguna otra pregunta acerca de esta parte o de otra parte. 
porque ahorita lo podemos ver, no hay ningún problema. Ya saben que acá estamos para sacar todas nuestras dudas, ¿verdad? Um, I, I do have a question, but can you explain do I have to uh, do my homework? Because I am in the homepage, homepage? but I am selecting the first one, that it said one of one. This but, one. Huh? You mean this one? Let me see. Yes. Yes. The 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 little book, the first one. Mm -hmm. In my case, I being honest with you, um, I haven't done the the homework because I don't understand how to do it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. How to answer or not? How to do it here in the computer? Oh. Also, I was uh, about to share my screen too, but sure, you sure. say that you prefer a screenshot. Let me see if I can because... do that. I don't know. To be honest with you, I've never done that before, so let me see. Vamos a ver. Okay. Veamos si ahora se puede. Tal vez intente ahora a ver si le permite. No sé. Okay. Vamos a ver, voy a parar acá de compartir, a ver si lo puede hacer Walter. Es... ¿Qué? This one. There we go. Okay, very good. Where? So, so can you see my screen? We can see your screen, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Here, resume mm -hmm. course. It's loading. Right. And after this, what is next? Here. Right, okay. Here. So that's like the first part, like the objective. Then you move on to the video, which is the next part. And then here. No. No. Uh, the first. One. Let's say like the first activity that you have is the one that has like the little icon with the uh, the pen, the pencil this. on it. Ah, uh, this one. Okay. Yeah, because this and is the now video. Now I like... understand because I was thinking, I was thinking that here I will have the the video or the answers. That's why. Oh. But I now I understand. Thank right. you. Right. No Thank problem. You. I'm sorry. You're my welcome. bad. No, it's okay. It's okay. No problem. Okay, so I will stop to share my screen. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, right, Walter. There we go. Very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. No hay problema. Eh, ya menos ya salimos de la duda ahí, ¿verdad? Y por eso es importante que lo veamos acá todos juntos. Yes. Vale, entonces acá, guys, eh, vamos a avanzar. Les quería mostrar un poco de la sección número 2. Vamos a ver por acá. So, if you remember, guys, the last time we discussed, well, basically we started this new topic, which is uh, personality types. We we'll, uh, watched the video. Uh, do you guys remember anything about the video? Uh, we had like uh, two people in the video. There was uh, like uh, somebody asking questions, and then we have another person who was answering to the, uh, those questions. And they were talking about personality types, like sociable. Uh, I think that I, I can really remember the others, but they were talking about how uh, each personality has its own uh, job that can uh, fit to that personality. We can watch the video again, because I think that we watched the video like two days ago. Probably we already forgot. So I, I don't know what you think. Do you, do you guys want to watch the video or no? What do you guys say about it? Do you guys want to watch the video or should we just skip this part? ¿Qué piensan? ¿Vemos el video? Eh, 
Yo la verdad que no me acuerdo tanto. Porque andaba ahí. If I had the same problem, dice Daniela. Ok. It's ok. No, no worries. Uh, por eso estamos acá, ¿verdad? Para ayudarnos entre todos. ¿Tienen dudas? Pues igual yo con gusto les puedo responder las dudas. Bueno, entonces vamos a ver quizás rapidito el video. Eh, ya lo habíamos visto antes, pero solamente para recapitular, ¿verdad? Bueno, vamos a ver. Welcome to Matheson College. Alright, so he is visiting Matheson College. I'm Jamie Fitch. Some students arrive on campus with clear career ambitions, but most students need some help figuring out which field of study is right for them. The good news is, help is available. I'm here with Jacqueline Auden, a career advisor from the Career Services Department here on campus. Ms. Auden, you've advised a lot of students over the years about choosing a major and a career path. What should students consider? Well, Jamie, one of the first things to consider is your personality type. Well, along with your skills, abilities, and personal preferences, your personality type can guide you toward finding a major that best suits you. Okay. So how many personality types are there? There are six basic personality types. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. All right, guys, so we have Based on what they are saying, uh, based on what she's saying, actually, we have six personality types. We have artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Okay? So, uh, she's saying that one of the first things to consider, it is your personality type. Uh, aside from, like, your personal preferences, uh, that is one of the most important things, she says, okay? So what do you guys think? Uh, in my case, I think that probably I'm more uh, conventional and maybe a little bit social, uh, sociable, not that much. But when it comes to the kind of jobs that I had in the past, uh, I have to be sociable. It's not that I'm like this all the time, but it is, uh, I mean, I, I got accustomed to it, right? So vamos a escuchar aquí cómo... Y quiero que ustedes me digan, quiero que ustedes me digan cuál creen que es su personalidad y vamos a ver qué me pueden decir, tal vez acerca de su trabajo, y cómo creen que ustedes eh, aplican su personalidad a su trabajo. Okay? So as you can see in my case, uh, I have to be sociable because we, I mean, uh, you are in the education field, you need to interact with people, you need to uh, be able to connect with others, so then you have to be sociable, right? So that's like the way that my personality uh, fits this uh, job, right? Okay, vamos a escuchar este, este video rapidito, okay? Really quick. The first type is artistic. These people are creative and imaginative, and they prefer to work on one project at a time rather than multitasking. What careers should artistic types pursue? The most important thing for this type of people is being in charge of a creative project. So careers to consider are landscaping, graphic design, web design. I see. The next personality type is conventional. Tell us about that one. Yes. Conventional types are practical and orderly. They respond well to rules, procedures, schedules, things like that. Hmm. What types of careers do conventional type people usually enjoy? Conventional types often enjoy numbers, and they're also good with measuring and analyzing things in general. So often they tend to be bankers, lawyers, building inspectors, and technical writers. Are they good business people? Sure, they can be. They usually work for others. The next type, enterprising people, those are the business owners. Ah, the enterprising type. What characteristics do those people share? They tend to be leaders. They're independent and willing to take risks. They're good at motivating people, so we often find them in sales. Really? Hmm. What careers do they enjoy, aside from sales? Well, they're good at directing projects and people, so they make good managers. Okay, so that's three types. Let's take a look at the fourth type, invest. Vamos a parar aquí, guys, para que analicemos primero los primeros tres. Okay, tenemos artístico, convencional y tenemos enterprising, right? Enterprising, artistic, and conventional. Eh, vamos a ver, ¿alguien aquí se considera tal vez artístico? Yo no tanto, la verdad. Creo que no tengo tantas características. Convencional, tal vez un poco, porque tal vez soy un poco más como, como dice ahí, puntual, un poco más práctico. Creo que es lo que decía, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver por acá. Vamos a ver. 
Aquí están las características, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver. Respond well to rules. Y también, pero vamos a ver un poquito para atrás. Practical and orderly and respond well, well to rules. rules. ¿Vale? ¿Qué piensan de esto? ¿Ustedes son así o son más quizás de, del tipo enterprise? Yo no soy de ese tipo porque la verdad es que no soy bueno para la venta. ¿verdad? Eso déjenme decírselo. Que yo trabajé un, un tiempo, digamos, como un poco de ventas, pero no me fue bien, la verdad. Uh, I wasn't good at that. I mean, I'm not good at sales. Because I, I don't... Uh, I wasn't, like, really good at lying. That was, like, <laughs> the <clears throat> one of the reasons why. I think that when you are at sales, you need to be a little liar. Not, I mean, not liar, but you have to be able to say uh, things to convince others. And I'm not, I wasn't really good at that. I wasn't good at, at sales. So I'm not that kind of people. I'm maybe more sociable or conventional, I guess. Vamos a ver, ¿qué piensan ustedes? ¿Alguien que, que, que se puede identificar con esto y por qué? Hasta ahora, ¿alguien que sea artístico o tal vez convencional? ¿Qué piensan? ¿O no tenemos de eso? Vamos a ver los otros entonces. Veamos los otros. What characteristics do those people share? They tend to Really? Hmm. What careers do they enjoy, aside from sales? Well, they're good at directing projects and people. So they make good managers. Okay, so that's three types. Let's take a look at the fourth type, investigative. Well, this type of person prefers logic to imagination and tends to be precise and detailed. So, Jamie, what are some careers that you think would suit this type of person? Hmm. Precise and detailed. Vaya, quiero que me digan cuáles son las características de las personas de este tipo de personalidad investigativa. ¿Cuáles son las características? Vamos a ver. I think it's people that have to um, analysis, mm -hmm. have to analyze, people analyze and uh -huh. um, keep the details uh, and, and curious people also. Curious people and people that uh, they have to pay attention to details, right? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Arlene. Vamos a ver quién más. ¿Qué piensan? Ahí tenemos una, de hecho, aquí dice, ¿verdad? They tend to focus on details. Okay? They, to, they tend to focus on details. They are logical and precise. Okay? Miren bien que acá esta parte es para que nosotros aprendamos a describir personalidades. Okay? Eso es lo que tenemos que hacer. Es un poquito como más difícil, pero tenemos que aprender a hacerlo. Okay? So, investigate Investigative people, they tend to be more logical and precise, and they, they tend to focus on details, okay? And because of that, uh, the jobs that best uh, suit their personalities uh, are like, for example, uh, a scientist. Precise and detailed. So Jamie, what are some careers that you think would suit this type of person? Science would probably be appealing. You're right. Uncovering mysteries is key to any type of science. Mm -hmm. But librarians are also the investigative type. Librarians. Really, any career that involves research, research. fits into this category. Hmm. So that brings us up to the fifth type, realistic. Yes. So that brings us up to the fifth type, okay? That brings us up to the fifth type, okay? So nos trae al, al quinto tipo, okay, guys? Realistic types like to work with their hands, with tools. They want to see the results of their work in physical terms. That sounds like repair people to me. Yes, that's right. Also jewelry makers, builders, and engineers. Okay, then we have the realistic guys, realistic people. <clears throat> okay, uh, ¿Qué rasgos tienen eh, las personas que son realísticas, guys? Vamos a ver. <clears throat> What kind of people are they? People who are realistic, they have a realistic personality. Por aquí está, ¿verdad? These are hands-on and physical. They work well with tools. Okay. So basically, people like mechanics, uh, construction workers, that kind of people, right? Muy bien. 
Bueno, vamos a por acá. Yes, I think you're right. The last type is social. Social types like people. Their jobs usually involve helping and communicating with others. Oh, but teaching would appeal to social types. Oh, yes. Medicine, coaching, broadcast journalism, and, of course, career advising. That's us, social types. Ms. Alden, thank you for sharing this information with us. It was my pleasure, Jamie. Well, we hope this information has been helpful to you. If you'd like to learn more, visit the Career Services Department and tell them Jamie sent you. There we go. Hey, guys, ¿alguna pregunta acerca de esta parte? <clears throat> Vean que más adelante creo que hay, no sé si una actividad por acá. No, parece que no. Bueno, entonces vamos a continuar. Vamos a continuar porque ya tenemos que ir avanzando, ¿ok? All right, so we have the next one. It says 2.2, lesson objectives. By the end of this class, participants will learn how to use gerund phrases as subjects and objects. Okay, uh, what do you guys know about gerunds? What is a gerund, guys? What is a gerund? ¿Qué piensan acerca de esto? Vamos a ver, ¿qué piensa, por ejemplo, eh, también callados ahora? Dinora, ¿qué es un gerundio? Um, is like a description the personality okay okay, okay. A description. I don't remember more <laughs> it's okay no problem yeah that's fine you don't remember that's fine it's okay vamos a ver aquí quien más quien sabe algo por acá Karen vamos a ver no la veo ahora Karen se me desapareció eh, ¿Qué es un gerundio, Karen? Um, I think it's a verb ending with ing. Very good. Very good. Yes. Yeah, very good. That was a good answer. Yeah, so basically a gerund is like a verb. It's like a word, uh, a verb that ends with ing. It's like Karen said. Uh, it can have different meanings. Uh, we can use it like subject. And it, we can, it can also be used as an object, okay? So we're going to learn uh, how to use gerunds as subjects and objects, okay? <clears throat> Vaya, vamos a ver acá, rapidico, really quick. Welcome to this class. In this class, what we want to do is we want to practice gerund phrases. And so we're going to learn how gerunds are used as subjects and also... Oh, sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened. Let me try it again. Other use as objects. And uh, you might have seen and you might be a little bit confused about this whole deal here. So, for example, whenever you see, uh, like at hotels, you see no smoking, uh, no parking, all that. You might think that that is wrong, but actually it's not. And then we're going to try to make sense of all that here. Um, and then, so let me give you an example on how this is used. So we're going to talk a little bit about politics uh, a little bit. Uh, not going into details, of course, but just some general things about it. Uh, so running for office. Well, look at a couple of sentences here and then now. Dame un segundo, guys. Se ve muy. No se ve bien, la verdad. Entonces lo voy a abrir mejor en YouTube. Hold on for just a second. I'm going to open it in YouTube so we can have a better uh, picture quality because it looks very bad. And uh, just uh, see some common things oh that politicians goodness. say whenever they're running for right, office. So it, seems like, so it seems like it's not going to be possible. We have. The highest quality available, which is 240. Okay, so anyway, All right, let's continue with the video, guys. Well, the, the first thing is voting is an important responsibility. Um, improving our schools, fighting for a new hospital, etc. So let me quickly outline that this is a gerund. So a gerund is simply a verb which uh, you um, add ing to. All right, and then and of course there's some spelling things about it that you might have learned in previous classes. But here are some examples on how gerunds are are used either as subjects of sentences. So for example, voting is an important responsibility. Voting is the subject of our sentence, so it's not acting as a verb. Let's discuss improving our schools. So as you can see there, we're using that as an object. And so let's try to make sense of all of this. A couple of more examples: choosing a candidate takes time. As a verb. Entonces acá tenemos los gerundios. Tal como dijo Karen, eh, un gerundio es un verbo que te, eh, lo tenemos en la forma con ing al final. Ok, nos explica también que acá hay algunas reglas de gramática, como ustedes tal vez lo puedan recordar, que es por ejemplo cuando termina un verbo con la letra y, 
o cuando termina con la letra E. Like, for example, we have make, then we have making, right? Like, you, you uh, subtract the E, and then you add letter I and G at the end. So basically, that's what, it's, what it is. Uh, like, for example, in this case, in proof, uh, it ends with the letter E. So then we uh, uh, remove the E at the end, and then we add I and G. So it becomes improving. So let's discuss improving our schools. We have voting is an important responsibility. Entonces, básicamente lo que vamos a ver en la clase ahora es <clears throat> cómo estos verbos toman la función no de un verbo en la oración, sino que toman la función de, eh, por ejemplo, en este caso, un sujeto. ¿okay? Decimos, voting is an important responsibility. Entonces, en este caso, el, el sujeto de la oración va a ser este. <clears throat> Perdón. Y luego tenemos por acá, let's discuss improving our schools. Okay, vamos a discutir eh, la mejora de nuestras escuelas. Okay, entonces acá, <coughs> o mejorar nuestras escuelas. Entonces acá eh, nos dicen en el video que acá está teniendo una función como del objeto. Okay? Recuerden que hablamos que habían objetos y sujetos. El objeto es sobre el cual recae la eh, acción. Okay? Así que vamos a continuar. Vamos a ver un poco más acerca de esto. Es, es parte de la gramática que tenemos que aprender. Okay? Let's discuss improving our school. So as you can see there, we're using that as an object. And so let's try to make sense of all of this. A couple of more examples. Choosing a candidate takes time. And uh, let me point out uh, the gerunds here. So choosing a candidate, that's, that's the subject of our sentence. I enjoy working for the people. Okay, that's uh, working in that case is not acting as a verb. It's acting as the object of our sentence. Uh, do you resent paying higher taxes? Again, pain is not the verb. It's, is, is the gerund that is being used um, as, a, as an object there. So now that I gave a few examples on how gerunds are used as subjects and how they're used as objects, I would like to go into details now and talk a little bit about the usage of gerunds. And the first thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, in this case, in this lesson, we're using gerunds as nouns. So we're using them as people, places, or things. And so we're familiar with the verb work, for example. And if we include ing, then we turn that into a gerund, right? But now we're going to use this gerund as either a subject of a sentence or as the object of a of the sentence. And that's what we're going to learn. So let's take a look at the, another gerund. So for example, the verb they, I'm sorry, the verb pay, we turn that into a gerund by simply adding ing. And then we have pain, improve. And of course, there are some spelling things that you should have learned in previous classes. Uh, and uh, we remove that E, for example, then we add ING, and so we have improving. Let's go into some details now, and let's talk a little bit about gerunds, and particularly gerunds being used as subject of sentences. So on the screen right now, we can see that a gerund can be the subject of a sentence, and a couple of grammar rules to learn is that it is always going to be singular. It's always going to act as a third person. And so let's look at that. Voting is an important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. And as you can see, those are subjects of sentences. And uh, the idea here is that this is going to be singular. So we're always going to have a singular verb. Like in this case, voting is an important responsibility. We could say voting was or voting will be. But the idea is that it's going to be singular. And then the other example, choosing a candidate takes time. Again, choosing becomes the subject of our sentence. And so it becomes a thing, not necessarily um, a verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add S to that verb. When necessarily, um, a... Okay, guys. Entonces, acá en esta parte, eh, ¿qué pudieron ustedes eh, identificar? Vamos a ver, ¿qué es lo que han dicho acerca de eh, un gerundio como sujeto? ¿Qué cosas acaba de decir que son importantes? Bueno, acaba de decir que vamos a tomarlo como si fuera una tercera persona, ¿ok? So, voting is an important responsibility, ¿ok? We're not going to say something like voting are an important responsibility. That is not correct, okay? You need to say it like voting is an important responsibility. A voting was an important responsibility, okay? So uh, you need to keep that in mind. And uh, also in this case, if you can see here, uh, the next uh, example number two, it says choosing a candidate takes time, okay? So it's like a third person, right? Takes time, okay? Choosing a candidate takes time. So we add the, the, the letter S at the end because this is 
uh, like a third person, right? Like he, she, and it. Okay. <clears throat> Vaya, ¿por qué piensan ustedes de que acá, eh, que, no sé si alguien me puede explicar, ¿por qué acá choosing eh, esta palabra, el gerundio, es el sujeto? ¿Por qué? Vamos a ver, who can explain that to me? Why choosing is the subject in this sentence? We have choosing a candidate takes time. Why? Well, I think it's because it's the main op is the main um purpose of the sentence, or because we are talking about choosing mm -hmm. someone. Right. So very good. Thank you so much, Karen. Right. Uh, very good. So basically, rem you can remember, guys. The subject is like uh about who we are talking about, right? Like for example, uh, if you say. I am happy. I'm, I'm talking about me, right? So in this case, we are talking about uh, choosing a candidate, right? Just like Karen said. So, <clears throat> básicamente acá estamos hablando de qué, qué, eh, toma, qué es lo que toma tiempo. El escoger a un candidato. O sea, el, el escoger. Eso es el sujeto. Porque estamos hablando acerca de eso. ¿Ok? No sé si queda claro. Espero que sí. Pero si no, pues igualmente... Eh, eh, si tienen alguna duda, por favor, háganmelo saber. Pero exactamente como Karen dijo, estamos hablando acerca de eso. Eh, igual que en el primer ejemplo, ¿ok? Estamos diciendo, votar es una responsabilidad importante. ¿Ok? Entonces, estamos, okay, ¿acerca de qué estamos hablando nosotros? Estamos hablando acerca de eh, el acto de votar. ¿Ok? O en el otro caso, estamos hablando de el acto de escoger a un candidato. ¿Ok? No sé, Dinora, ¿tenía alguna pregunta? Eh, no, teacher. Ok, very good. So, uh, any questions, guys, so far? Any questions? Vale, entonces, si no hay preguntas, vamos a seguir. Espero que nos vaya quedando claro. Entonces, acá ya vimos cómo un gerundio puede ser un sujeto. Ok, fíjense bien. Voting is an important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. Ok. Vamos expandiendo nuestro vocabulario. Ustedes ahora pueden utilizar los gerundios para hablar acerca de algo. ¿Okay? Por ejemplo, ustedes pueden decir, eh, el fumar es malo para la salud. ¿Okay? For example, you can say, smoking is bad for uh, your health. ¿Okay? Or for people's health. You can say something like that. Or you can say, uh, drinking is a bad uh, habit, for example. ¿Okay? Beber es un mal hábito, o algo así. O... Ese tipo de cosas. Ustedes pueden utilizar un gerundio para hablar acerca de algo. ¿Ok? Más que todo se trata como de eh, hacer que una acción se convierta en un eh, sujeto del cual nosotros vamos a hablar. ¿Ok? Por ejemplo, el botar la basura es malo. Eh, hablar muy fuerte eh, es, es malo en los cines, por ejemplo. No sé. Una acción nosotros la convertimos en un sujeto. ¿Ok? Eso es lo que estamos haciendo acá. Usando gerundios como sujetos. Verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add S to that verb. When talking about this topic, it's important not to confuse the gerunds with the present progressive. So let me give you an example about that. If I express, I'm voting today, uh, really what I'm saying is that it's an action that is happening today. Right? It, it could be in the future, by the way, as well, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, and on the other hand, voting is an important responsibility. So in that particular case, I'm using that as a present progressive form. On the other hand, I'm using that as a gerund. So I'm using that as the object of my sentence. And so there, it's a verb. And the second example, it's, a, it's the subject of a sentence. And so let me just give you a quick example of what I want you to do. So what is exciting for you? Okay. Well, windsurfing is exciting. Windsurfing is very exciting. Playing soccer is exciting. Going to the movies is exciting. So all of those expressions that you've heard in the past, and they don't quite make that much sense, they should make a lot more sense now. And so what I would like for you to do is to take that concept then and tell me what makes you laugh, what gives you a headache, what is impolite, what is popular in your country, what destroys the environment, and what uh, can be dangerous. All right, teacher, let me try the first one. For me, watching comedy movies makes me laugh. For me, learning math gives me a headache. Using your cell phone in class isn't polite. Playing basketball is popular in my country. 
Burning fossil fuels destroys the environment. Not taking action on weapons of mass destruction can be dangerous. Okay, escuchen ahí que también puede ser negativo, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, not taking action on something can be dangerous, for example, right? So, también puede ser negativo, no solamente va a ser positivo, sino que también negativo, también va a ser eh, el mismo eh, significado, ¿ok? en este caso, que se va a convertir en un sujeto, ¿ok? Bueno, vamos con la última parte, rapidito. Now, let me talk about the last part of our class, and what we want to do next is we want to learn how gerunds can also be the objects of sentences. And so, let me give a few examples about that. So, we heard politicians say, I suggest, improve in our schools. So, as you can see, the suggest is our verb, and improve becomes the object of our sentence. So, it's no longer a verb. I enjoy working for the people, this is what politicians say. And what we want to do here is we want to use we're working for the people. Por acá ya tenemos otra forma en la que podemos utilizarlo, guys. Los gerunds. Uh, podemos utilizarlos también como el objeto de ciertos verbos. Si se fijan, tenemos como un verbo principal. Okay, so I suggest. And then we say uh, improving. So basically, uh, this becomes the object of this. Okay, because the action of the uh, sentence in this case is uh, affecting uh, this uh, idea here, right? So I suggest improving our schools or I enjoy working for the people, right? Because basically uh, enjoy is affecting uh, or is what basically uh, affects the, in this case, the gerund, right? Yo disfruto trabajar para las personas, okay? La acción recae sobre eso. Eh, yo sugiero mejorar nuestras escuelas. ¿Ok? Mi sugerencia es hacia esto. Hacia mejorar. O yo disfruto el qué. Trabajar. Right? ¿Estamos claros hasta ahí? ¿Alguna pregunta? Ok. No hay pregunta. Entonces, bueno, ya vimos esta parte de los gerundios como sujetos y como objetos. ¿Ok? Espero que no tengamos problemas con esa parte. Vemos esto por acá. Gerund phrases. Okay, and then you guys have this uh, little activity here. It says, okay, let's look at the instructions first. It says, unscramble the gerund phrases. Okay, so we have, is not a man jobs, uh, I'm sorry, a man's job designing clothes. Right? So then we unscramble, we have to put them in the right order. And we say designing clothes is not a man's job, right? It says make sure you use the correct spelling and pronunciation, right? So like for this, uh, in this case, we have very challenging taking care of children must be, right? So taking care of children must be very challenging, right? Okay, básicamente lo tenemos que hacer. Eh, ordenarlas en el, eh, bueno, valga la redundancia, en el orden correcto. Eso es la actividad para esta parte. Okay. Aplicando lo que acabamos de ver. Son frases con gerundios. Okay. Dice aquí, working on a movie set sounds fascinating. Fascinating. Uh, then, uh, living as an artist could be uh, pretty difficult. Okay. Básicamente eso tenemos que hacer. Eh, bueno. Uh, so, moving forward, guys. So, moving forward, we have the next part which is 2.5, just lesson objective. By the end of this class, you will learn how to use adjectives and nouns to make comparisons. Okay, esta siguiente parte se trata de hacer comparativas con adjetivos y nombres. Okay, creo que para esta altura todos sabemos que los adjetivos son los que eh, dan como la descripción de las características del nombre, ¿correcto? Entonces, en este caso vamos a utilizar eh, adjetivos y nombres para hacer comparaciones, especialmente acerca del trabajo. Es algo que ustedes lo pueden aplicar en su vida diaria. Entonces vamos a escucharlo rapidico. Por acá. Liz, a photographer, a painter. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to compare different jobs using adjectives and nouns. For example, let's say that you're considering being a fashion designer or an accountant. Being a fashion designer is more interesting than being an accountant. Or maybe you're considering working as a doctor or a nurse. 
So a doctor has worse hours than a nurse. So in order to express these ideas, we need to use adjectives and nouns to make these comparisons. So let me do the following. Let me just uh, present the structure. But uh, before we do that, what I would like to do is present these um, comparison structures. Uh, let me just quickly point out that um, all the comparisons that we're going to do in this class and also the following, we're, we're just going to use these few comparisons, as you can see. We're going to use these words to make the comparisons. So as you can see, we could say more. And um, here in the middle, we will include an adjective. Uh, and, um, and then we'll include then. And that will make the comparison there. Um, on the other hand, we could use less, and at the same time, we'll use an adjective there. Um, so a quick example, um, being a fashion designer is more interesting than being an accountant, okay? or being an accountant is less interesting than being a fashion designer, and so on and so forth. Um, I guess also, uh, since I pointed out a doctor, a doctor has worse hours than a nurse, or a nurse has better hours than a doctor. Uh, and then we're going to use this um, other ones here to point out that they might have similarities, that they might be the same or that they might not be the same. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing in uh, this class. So let's try to make the comparison with, between two jobs. Um, what we'll do is we'll select this first two, as you can see here. So we have this one looks like a lawyer, and picture number two looks like a mechanic. So let's make the comparison between lawyer and a mechanic. Before we do that, we want to have some uh, work-related adjectives in mind, such as stressful, fantastic, fascinating, difficult, easy, interesting, dangerous. And of course, there are many more, but because of time, we're not going to go through um, a lot of other adjectives. Uh, and we also want to have, uh, or we want to consider work-related uh, nouns. So what are nouns? They're just people, places, or things, right? So in this case, when we think about jobs, we want to think about things like hours, how many hours you work, education, uh, how much education do you have, uh, work uh, is your job. Does your job consist of doing a lot of work, right? Uh, and these are the kind of things that we want to keep in mind in order for us to make uh, these comparisons. So, what can we say about a lawyer? Okay, so in this part, uh, really quick, we just have to basically make a comparison between uh, two uh, jobs. In this case, and we have these expressions. So we can do that, right? We have more than less than, better than, worse than, as, as, not as, as, okay. And then basically what we need what we need to do here in this part is that we just need to take two uh, jobs, like a lawyer and a mechanic. And then we can say things like, uh, being a lawyer is more uh, difficult than being a mechanic, for example. Or uh, a lawyer, uh, being a lawyer requires more hours than being a mechanic, por ejemplo. Solo un ejemplo no es que sea la verdad. Entonces acá, ¿qué es lo que estamos haciendo nosotros? Utilizando tanto adjetivos como nombres para hacer la comparación. Eh, siempre en medio de estas palabras que utilizamos de comparativo van a ir ya sea el nombre o el adjetivo. ¿okay? Por ejemplo, more interesting than, o more hours than, uh, more difficult than. Eh, y igual para los otros. ¿okay? Better... Uh, Bueno, en este caso vamos a uh, being a lawyer is better than uh, bueno, aquí creo que vamos a, being a lawyer is better than uh, being creo que aquí, acá quiero ver cómo es que permítanme un instante guys, que ya, ya me, me, me enredé un poco yo solo uh, vamos a ver esta parte vamos a ver Bueno, para este, para este caso sí es así, para este otro caso creo que no, así que perdón ahí, de, solamente para aclararlo, creo que yo me había confundido. Eh, pero básicamente lo que vamos a hacer es una comparativa, ¿verdad? Es como, por ejemplo, en este caso decir, eh, ser un abogado eh, tiene mejores horas que eh, ser un <coughs> mecánico, ¿ok? Entonces sí, en, en ese caso sí, yo creo que yo me había confundido un poco, pero ajá, sería, uh, being a lawyer has better hours than being a mechanic. Or being a lawyer um, is, uh, bueno. Better uh, benefits. Has better benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Luis, I appreciate that. So uh, being a lawyer has better benefits than being a mechanic, for example. Básicamente lo que tenemos que hacer ahí es eso. Eh, sustituir eh, ya sea un nombre, como lo que estamos viendo anteriormente, 
puede ser las horas, puede ser la educación, cosas relacionadas con el trabajo, porque cada esta parte está enfocada en eso. Vamos a terminar de ver esta parte solo para que nos quedemos ahí y ya luego pues eh, creo que hasta ahí nos vamos a quedar por el día de hoy. Versus, uh, let's say, mechanic, right? We want to make the comparison between those two. Well, uh, we could say the following. I think we could say that working as a lawyer uh, is more <coughs> stressful than working as as a mechanic. And so we will use an adjective in this case. I decided to use the adjective stressful, uh, and it's, I think it's also important to mention that this is an an opinion, right? So my opinion could be different than yours. You could think the opposite of this. So I, I wouldn't know neither one of those two because I've never worked as a lawyer or as a mechanic, so I wouldn't know which one is more stressful. But it sounds like the lawyer is more stressful, right? And the way that we do it is, well, we're, notice that we're continuing using general phrases similar to uh, the previous class that we had where, where we learned how to make general phrases. So working as a lawyer is more stressful than working as a mechanic. Um, at the same time, you could uh, you could say working as a mechanic is less stressful than working as a lawyer, um, and that's in essence is basically the same sentence, right? But it's just in a different way. Working as a mechanic is less stressful than working as a lawyer. There you go. There we go. And the reason I did this is because I quickly wanted to point out that we can use either more uh, or we could also use less. Right? So what else could we say about a lawyer and a mechanic? Is as interesting as working as a mechanic. So if I absolutely love cars, then definitely I think that working as a mechanic is very interesting. So in this case, I wanted to point this one out uh, because I want to express that both jobs are the same. So to me, both jobs have the same level, if you will, right? They are the same. One is not better than the other. Uh, and again, this is my opinion um, because I love cars and I also think that um, uh, lawyers are interesting and the work that the lawyers do is very interesting. So again, I want to point out that in this case, I'm using adjectives to make the comparisons. What I want to do next is use nouns to make the comparisons. So what kind of nouns can we think about when uh, we think about comparing these two jobs? Well, previously I mentioned that we can think of things like hours, maybe education, uh, or perhaps the type of work that people do. So, well, lawyer and mechanic. It, it usually is the case that a lawyer has more education than a mechanic, right? So, uh, in this case, we can say that a lawyer has more education uh, than a mechanic. Uh, this is the noun that I am using to compare. What else can we say about the two jobs? Well, um, I could probably say that a mechanic has better hours than a lawyer. Okay, and in this case, as you can see, I used the one here in the middle better, and in the middle I included uh, the noun to make the comparisons, right? So the noun that I'm using to compare, it's hours. At the same time, I could say a lawyer has worse hours than a mechanic, okay? Uh, and perhaps I could say that working as a mechanic isn't as much work as working as a lawyer. So what I would like for you to do now is I would like for you to look at all of these jobs. I will be. <clears throat> bueno, guys. Eh, rapidito, solamente antes de terminar, gracias a los que se han quedado. Eh, acá, perdón, con esta parte, prácticamente estamos utilizando nombres con esta comp estructura de comparación. Eh, por ejemplo, acá, mechanic has better hours than a lawyer. Estamos utilizando nombres, ¿ok? O uh, mechanic has better uh, education than a lawyer, por ejemplo. ¿Ok? Luego, eh, para la última parte, <coughs> si ustedes se fijan acá, eh, esta otra estructura work. dice working as a mechanic isn't as much work as, as working, working as, as a lawyer. Work. Okay, básicamente acá estamos utilizando también un nombre. Okay? O podemos utilizar también un adjetivo. Isn't that as interesting as working as a lawyer? Entonces ahí en ese caso sí podemos utilizar ambos. Pero esta estructura que tenemos acá Vamos a utilizar más que todo nombres. ¿Ok? Eh, bueno, así que mil disculpas, guys. Eh, hasta acá nos vamos a quedar. Porque ya nos pasamos de la hora, de hecho. Eh, casi que cubrimos todo. Había bastante material, la verdad. Para esta sección. Yo creo que para la otra semana va a ser diferente. Porque solamente es una sección nada más. Así que eh, espero que pues, puedan completar la sección número 2. Si tienen alguna pregunta, 
no duden en preguntar en el grupo y ahí vamos a ayudarnos entre todos, ¿ok? Bueno, muchas gracias por quedarse hasta el final, de verdad les agradezco mucho, espero que tengan un lindo fin de semana. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Thank you, teacher. Bye-bye.